that moment when you're cuddling your chicken and you freak the cluck out because there are bugs crawling all over your chicken. <sighs> I have been there. I know how awful it is, so I wanna help you with it. In an uncertain world, one thing unites us all, the chicken. <coughs> From the suburbs to the big city, let's learn an inclusive and stress-free way to raise chickens. Welcome to Chickenlandia. Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia. I am a backyard chicken educator here in the Pacific Northwest, but you can call me the president of Chickenlandia. Oh, I am rocking the 80s vibe today. <laughs> Whatever haters. My philosophy has always been that chicken keeping should be easy, stress-free, and everyone should be able to do it. But I cannot deny how stressful it is when you find mites or lice on your chicken. I think the first thing that people feel is like, oh my gosh, can like, can I get them? Are they gonna bite me? <laughs> That's a legitimate concern. But right off the bat, I do wanna tell you that for the most part, the critters that are gonna be on your chickens and living off of them as parasites, they are host specific. What that means is that they need birds in order to survive. They can't really survive on humans. So it is possible that you could get bitten by one but they can't live on you. So it's not like they're gonna come inside and you know, just completely infest your bed while you sleep. So I do wanna give you some options in how to treat them if you're already dealing with mites or lice. But before we do that, we're gonna talk a little bit about prevention because that's really the best thing that you can do is prevent them and then not have to deal with them at all. So I wanna give you some perspective. So maybe you can have a little bit less stress about it and maybe think about it a little bit differently. Literally, parasites are everywhere. They're, they're just all over the natural environment and they're actually really important to the ecosystem system that we live in, if we didn't have parasites, if they were all of a sudden gone tomorrow, the human race and all life on this planet would be in really bad shape. We actually need these types of critters in order to survive. The problem arises when an infestation occurs. We don't want our chickens to have an infestation and then really be vulnerable and at risk for other problems because their environment that they're living in is not balanced. So it's not a bad idea to think about things in terms of what would cause an infestation. The number one thing would be if you had a bird that is compromised in another way. I've had a situation in my flock where I've had a bird that was sick, I brought it inside, I checked it over like you should do whenever you have a sick bird, and I realized that it had mites. And then I checked all my other birds and I didn't find anything on them. Now, they likely had mites and or lice on them, but they did not have an infestation of those parasites, so I didn't really see them when I was checking them. I did treat the whole flock. So a lot of times when someone is asking about their sick chicken, their concern, they wanna know what's going on, people will say, well, check it for mites or lice because that can make your chicken sick. And that is true in extreme circumstances. There can be an infestation that is just so bad. Let's say it came from somewhere else and it infected your flock and there's a chicken that is really sick, like anemic because they're being bitten by mites or lice. But it's a lot more likely that the chicken was already compromised in some way and that's why the parasites were able to take hold. So since we know that birds that are healthy are less likely to be infested with parasites, then it makes sense that we want to make sure that they have everything that they need to live a happy and healthy life and really thrive. One very important thing, of course, is to make sure that they have a nice, well-balanced diet. That means you wanna give them their chicken feed. You wanna make sure that they have calcium supplement of some kind, either oyster shell or their own eggshells. You can crush those up and feed those back to them. You also wanna make sure that you're offering grit. Even if your chickens have a big space and you think that they're probably getting grit from their natural environment, you know, it depends on 
what the soil is like, what the environment is like where you live. I'm a big believer in having the option of feeding your chickens some healthy table scraps. It's a great way to save some money. As long as you are eating healthy and you're not giving them too much of one thing, then I think it's perfectly fine to give them some table scraps. And in fact, it's a really sustainable practice. So to me, that's important to keep that as an option. Of course, it is just good old common sense. You want your chickens to have fresh, clean water daily. You can throw a splash of apple cider vinegar in their water that will also help the environment in their crop to keep those pathogens away. I always say just put a splash in their water, but you can put a tablespoon per gallon if it's really important for you to measure it. But what is going on over there? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you talking about? A very, very, very important thing to do to keep mites and lice under control is to make sure that your chickens have a place where they can dust bathe all year round. In the warmer months, it's easy for chickens to find a place to dust bathe in their natural environment. But when the weather gets colder, it starts to get harder for them to find a place to dust bathe. So it is up to you to make sure to provide an area like that for them. Basically what I do is I use a kitty litter box and I put dirt or sand in it. I will put wood ash in it, diatomaceous earth. Now, before you freak out on me, <laughs> The wood ash and the diatomaceous earth are optional. I'm gonna tell you in just a minute why I think diatomaceous earth is a good idea. And I'll even put aromatic herbs in their dust bath. So it's like they're at the spa. <laughs> you might say, oh, but they, you know, they won't get mites in the winter because it's too cold. Well, mites will hibernate. Let's not go there. Let's make sure they have the opportunity to dust bathe all the way through the winter. Even if you live in a really cold climate, it's just better safe than sorry. To check your chicken for lice or mites, you wanna check behind their neck, check at the base of the tail and under the wings, and also look in the vent area. Sometimes you can see like clumps of dirt and that could be a sign of eggs. So I don't wanna to lie to you. You can have the best practices in the world. You can have really good conditions and you can still end up with a problem with mites or lice. Sometimes it just happens. I am someone that definitely leans in the natural direction when it comes to how I teach about chickens and how I keep my own chickens. How we treat our chickens, what we put on our chickens, what we put in our chickens is not limited to your chickens. It can go in either into their eggs, it could go into the environment, it could go into the waterways. When you have chickens, you're participating in an e ecosystem that is already very stressed and we don't need to add to that stress. So one treatment that I've been hearing a lot of good things about, I haven't actually used it for myself, although I did order some the other day, is Elector PSP. Elector PSP is made out of a bacteria that exists in the soil and it is toxic to some insects. I do want to point out that it can be harmful for bees, but from what I read, it's only harmful until it dries. And you can spray it right on your chickens, you can spray it in your coop. The one thing that I think is really a downside of the Elector PSP is that it is very expensive and a lot of people can't afford it. Pyrethrin or permethrin are both pretty good options. You can put it directly on your chickens. You can put it in your coop. The big downside to these options is that they are very toxic to bees and also aquatic life. Also, these products are toxic to cats. That's something that a lot of people don't know. Be very careful because it can hurt your cat. My last recommendation for what you can use to treat mites or lice is diatomaceous earth. I could just hear some of you freaking out right now, but I'm gonna be really honest with you. I think diatomaceous earth has gotten a really bad rap and there is a lot of misinformation and alarmist information out there about it, but it's important for us to know the facts about what we're dealing with because I'm not saying that diatomaceous earth doesn't have any risk. It does. So let me just explain some things about diatomaceous earth. There are two kinds of diatomaceous earth. There is amorphous diatomaceous earth and there is crystalline diatomaceous earth. Amorphous 
amorphous diatomaceous earth is considered generally safe. It is in a lot of the products that we use every day. It's in our toothpaste, it's in things that we eat. Of course, it is still dust. You don't wanna get a whole bunch of dust in your lungs, but it is not associated with cancer. Crystalline diatomaceous earth is associated with cancer. Amorphous diatomaceous earth cannot be labeled as food grade with more than 1% of crystalline diatomaceous earth in it. I always want you to get food grade diatomaceous earth. Even though it is generally safe, I still use a mask if I am putting it on my chickens or if I'm putting it in the dust baths. But honestly, I really feel like when I am comparing that level of risk to the risk of something like ivermectin or frontline, I'm gonna go with diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth can be harmful to bees and other beneficial insects. Keep it limited to the coop and to your chickens. Don't use it if you're doing deep litter because it will destroy the beneficial critters that are needed for the composting process. A lot of people ask me like, okay, well, you know, if there's the Elector PSP, why don't you use that instead of diatomaceous earth? Diatomaceous earth is way cheaper than Elector PSP. So so in my effort to keep chicken keeping inclusive, I wanna give people this option and I wanna tell people it's okay if this is what you need to use. I know that people say it doesn't work. That's not my experience, okay? <laughs>you definitely want to clean your coop really well. That's the first thing I want you to do for any of these treatment options. Treat the coop, treat your chickens, and you're gonna do that by making sure you get behind the neck, all the way down the back, under the feathers, the vent area, and definitely underneath the wings. That's where you wanna concentrate the treatment. You're gonna do that, and then in another 10 days, you're gonna clean your coop out again, you're gonna treat your coop again, and you're gonna treat your chickens again. And if you're using diatomaceous earth, I want you to do it again in another 10 days. And then after you are golden, because you've treated your chickens for mites and lice, or you prevented them, you can start thinking, well, how can I prevent rats, disease, or other parasites in my flock. I want you to check out this video right here. It's gonna show you how to do all of that. And of course, it's 100% friendly, backyard chicken, education, and entertainment. You're gonna love it. <laughs>